So a cannon problem is, again, a projectile motion problem where I'm going to say it's any problem that has an initial velocity in the y direction. And so what we're going to do is if we have this cannon here and it's going to shoot some object out with some initial velocity, what we're going to have to do is understand, okay, if I can figure out that angle, I can then break this into its velocity in the x and its velocity in the y. So those, again, those are going to be my uh, components of my initial velocity, okay? Once we do that, then it just, be again, becomes the idea of I need to separate my motion into x and y. Again, x is constant, y is accelerated, and if I can then understand that, then, again, it's just the one thing that's going to be the same is the total time. So that's going to be the same for both sides, right? And so that's the one piece that I can take back and forth. The initial velocity in the x, the displacement, that's going to be how far, if this is the path that it takes, how far in the x direction did I just go, and then the time. Those are my three main variables. In the y direction, I can have my initial velocity in the y, uh, my final velocity in the y, right, right here, final velocity in the y, that's actually going to be equal to my initial velocity in the y if this is on the same level, right? So remember, anything that's thrown up, when it comes back down to that same position, that's a displacement of zero, right? Just the y motion come, went up, came back down, my y displacement is zero, and so the initial and the final velocity would actually be the same. My acceleration, again, would be negative 10. And then my displacement, you kind of have two different displacements. So displacement total, if it's coming back to the same point, it's going to be zero. Or, you know, the displacement half would be kind of the max height. And so that would be right here. That would be, you know, that's S one half in the Y direction. That's that maximum height above of where it was launched from. Okay, now up here, my velocity at that point would be zero. Okay, so you can treat this as if I am dealing with the whole situation, right? My total displacement is zero. Or if I want to see, okay, well, what's my max height? I know that my uh, final velocity at that point would be zero. And then what I know is that the uh, time up and then the time down, those should equal each other if we're, again, landing at the same position. And those two added together would equal the time total. Okay, again, it's very dependent upon as long as this location here is the same level here. Uh, what you'll get is you, you might get a cannon problem where uh, they have, you know, a cliff. And then we shoot something up. That's still a cannon problem. Uh, I would consider this is where it reaches that same point. And then now uh, we have to deal with this additional motion down here. Okay, but all of that is, is the same idea. So... There's really no difference with a cliff problem and a cannon problem. The situation here, though, is we have some initial velocity. We need to break it into its x and y components, and then we can just take time back and forth. Okay. Again, x motion is going to be constant, so the only really equation that I can use in my x motion is going to be that idea that velocity equals displacement over time. And then in my y motion, I can use any acceleration equations to be able to solve for any aspect that I need. So that's the main difference between cliff and cannon problems. Cliff problems, we have a horizontal velocity. A cannon problem, we're going to have this situation there, breaking our initial velocity into its x and y components. And again, this... cannon problem, oh, let's not let me move stuff, sorry, there we go, uh, a cannon problem, I would say, can also look like this, all right, now, what we need to understand is that even though this is a cannon problem, this part does not turn into a cliff problem, right, because we have this 
Once we get here, we have some velocity initially down in the y, and we still have that velocity in the x direction there. So we can't just treat it as a solely uh, a cannon problem into a cliff problem. This itself is its own beast. So we'll do some examples of that and kind of see how that works, but the same premise, okay? If I can understand that x motion is constant and the only equation is that constant velocity equation, my y motion is accelerated and I can use any of those acceleration equations, then I should be able to work out and be able to take the idea of total time back and forth.